sensitivity nor your gum issues. I would say it's very common for patients to have both. Does it worry me? Absolutely. What excites me about Sense and Sense is it allows you to be able to take care of both issues. There's no question it's something that I would recommend. It's a seventh place game of the Shriners Children's Charleston Classic as the Furman Paladins take on the South Carolina Gamecocks. The Low Country's premier college event continues on day three. And these two teams looking for their first wins of the tournament. Meanwhile, Virginia Tech and Charleston will play in the championship game coming up later today. Hello, everybody. Derek Jones alongside the former Tulane and University of Miami head coach Perry Clark. And Perry, these two teams looking to grab a W here in the final day of the Shriners Children's Charleston Classic. Without question, you have two coaches that know each other very well. They're very anxious and excited to get on the game on today. When you take a look at both sides and how they got to this point, Furman, same script, slow starts, recovered in the second half. Yeah, it's really important for Furman to get off to a fast start. They've been trying to climb uphill, and that's an awful difficult way to go. South Carolina struggled against Colorado State, better against Davidson, but still two losses looking for a W today. Coach Parrish did not like their effort in the first game, loved their effort in the second game, thought they had 16 points they could have scored, that they missed easy shots. And now meeting 126 between these two programs. Two Palmetto State teams getting together on the final day of the Charleston Classic. We are off and running. What's well, a good sign that Michi uh, Jack Johnson is out there for South Carolina. And it's GG Jackson knocking down the jumper. You see there the long storied history between these two programs, but the first meeting since 2010 and Lamont Paris, the head coach of South Carolina and Bob Ritchie, no strangers to each other as back the other end. Tyrese Huey with an easy layup. That's one of the things that Coach Paris has talked about the South Carolina team. Defensively, he felt that they have to get better. G.G. Jackson, the player to watch for South Carolina, top recruit in the nation. He's got the ball here. He'll try a three and hit. Five in a row to open by G.G. Jackson, the excellent freshman getting the Gamecock started. Well, one of the things with G.G. is he's so unselfish. And when you have a player that's so unselfish, trying to get him to work into a rhythm and play, and the, so the other guys can play off of him better. Ben Vanderwall inserted into the starting lineup today for Garrett Heen. So Coach Ritchie shaking things up. Pegues, under 10 to shoot. Under duress, and he travels. Right away, Furman comes out and tries to run some action because that was something that gave South Carolina trouble earlier in the earlier two games. They were trying to look for a back cut and trying to get an easy basket. As mentioned a moment ago, Lamont Paris in his first season with the University of South Carolina, no stranger to Bob Ritchie and the Furman Paladins. He was a former SOCON coach, Coach Chattanooga. The lob for Jackson. Overshot by Chico Carter Jr. Vanderwall corner three. And the rebound corralled by Carter. Michi Johnson returning to the lineup. Suffered an ankle injury in the opener. He's got it here. He'll fire away, and that's an air ball. That's where I think South Carolina gets itself in a little bit of trouble. They got two early easy baskets. They got no penetration on that possession. I think that they have to continue to attack the rim, collapse the defense, and get easy shots. Bob Ritchie, the head coach of the preseason favorites to win the SOCON, the Furman Paladins. Bothwell tries to get started early, can't. And the rebound snatched up by Hayden Brown. Morning basketball here in Charleston to get us going on the final day of the Shriners Children's Charleston Classic as a miss by G.G. Jackson leads to a possession for Furman. Slauson is a young man Furman needs a big game out of. Coming into the season, he was one of their main weapons. Baseline drive and feed the block off the Vanderwall layup attempt.
Brown. Now Carter. 5-2 lead. All five points for South Carolina scored by Gigi Jackson. That pass intercepted and stolen by Pegues. Pegues. Bothwell finds Lawson. Good pressure applied by South Carolina. Good rotation defensively by South Carolina and not giving up an easy shot. Pegues with a contested three over Jackson misses it. The rebound and the run out for the Gamecocks. Carter for three. He has been hot this whole tournament. He's played extremely well for South Carolina. He's got five. We're tied up. Turnaround shot by Huey. Misses, but he gets the follow. Again, this is where South Carolina has had some problems. Giving up an easy opportunity at the rim, not coming away with the defensive rebound. And they have been really hurt inside by people scoring in the paint against them. Outside for Johnson. Head fake. Straight on three for Gigi Jackson. That's good. When Michi Johnson's in the game, he understands his job is to really set up Gigi and to try to get him as easy a shots as he possibly can. Also, it's got to help. Jackson because that takes some pressure off of him as far as how he navigates the offense. Oh, without question. And his injury has really hurt South Carolina and their offensive development. So Tyrese Huey with the three from the corner, and he started off nicely here today. And the biggest thing for Furman is they're getting other people stepping up scoring outside of Bothwell, who's been carrying them the past two games. Huey has all seven. Looked like maybe a lob there in play for Jackson, and now a foul as Pegues was trying to move back down the floor. You see Gigi right there, face up, jump shot. He got it down, another one. See the range for the big fella, Kevin Durant. Again's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. And Dollar General. Save time, save money every day. Gigi Jackson has eight to pay South Carolina. Meanwhile, Tyrese Huey for Furman with seven. It's a four-point lead for the South Carolina Gamecocks. Derek Jones and Perry Clark with you. And Perry, as you take a look at Gigi's performance here so far through the tournament, he's been pretty solid. Well, he really has. And, you know, I know one of the things that Coach Parrish does not want to do is put too much pressure on this young man. Without question, he's a talent. Without question, he is a leader, and he's going to have a great career in South Carolina. And we've got more scouts here earlier than we did fans. I mean, so all the scouts are here watching him and everything. I think he's handled it exceptionally well. I think Coach Parrish is trying to make sure he doesn't feel the pressure of having to kind of be the main guy for South Carolina and having all that weight on him. He's 17 years old. He'll turn 18 next month. And it's a lot of pressure to be one of the top recruits in the country and then on top of that playing in the SEC uh, the SEC is, is unbelievable league this year as it's been in the past I mean there, there's gonna be great challenges night in and night out no days off in that conference the geese outside for Huey Huey feeds Garrett Heen who's into the game for the first time backdoor the cut and the hoop is from Foster that's the action that has hurt South Carolina in this tournament. Whenever teams have run action where they get back cuts, pin down screens, being able to make the adjustments off those cuts has been important. Carter answers from the corner, Chico Carter. He loves that corner jump shot. He does a really good job of spotting up and knocking those shots down, and that's going to be important as the season progresses. But again, he gets beat on a back cut. The back cuts have been the thing that has really hurt South Carolina. when the, They have to get off to the ball. So Bothwell with his first bucket of the game. He's been explosive in this tournament through the first two games, averaging over 20 points per. 
Daniel Hankins Sanford into the game for the first time. Jacoby right out there for the Gamecocks. Shot clock to five. Down to four. Off the window and in. Chico Carter, as Heen tries to answer, back down and does. So Garrett Heen beats the South Carolina defense to the rim. You have to get back. And what happened that time was the point guard drove at Carter and nobody covered back to make sure they took away the easy basket. Five straight field goals for Furman. Into Jackson, over his head. Tonight we have the men's basketball game of the day. It's the first ever meeting between number four Kentucky and number two Gonzaga. Last season's National Player of the Year, Oscar Shibwe, will be back for this one to lead. The Wildcats against Drew Timmy and the Bulldogs in Spokane. Coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ESPN and the app. Shibwe been nursing a knee injury, got back out on the floor on Thursday. Played about 14 minutes in Kentucky's win. One point game here. South Carolina goes with a lot of space and trying to get the ball inside. Slauson, good help defense. Left corner three, that's an air ball, slapped back outside and grabbed by the Gamecocks. Into Brown. Hank and Sanford misses at point blank range, gets it back, puts it up, puts it in. That's good execution that time by South Carolina. They're trying to get the ball more inside. By doing that, it allows them to get to the line. When we come back, we'll look at the last time Bob Ritchie and Lamont Paris met in the SoCon Championship game. At Ebert's Amco, we want to earn your trust. Do you want experienced technicians who will be honest with you and won't try to sell you extra services? Do you need someone to keep you safe and on the road? Do you think you can't put a price tag on trust, experience, honesty, and safety? Ebert's just did. Save at Ebert's. December will be here before you know it. Get ready for colder weather with a free and a free... Schedule your appointment now. Come see us at Ebert's Amco and Taylor's. Ebert's, a name you can trust. in the SOCON Tournament Championship game. Chattanooga against Furman. The Paladins he held a two-point lead with 4.3 seconds left thanks to Mike Bothwell. But in the end, a buzzer beater by David Jean Baptiste led to Chattanooga defeating Furman 64-63. The loss cost the Paladins their only chance at last season's NCAA Tournament. That was the last meeting between Lamont Paris and Bob Ritchie. Lamont Paris's team wins. He ends up going to the NCAA tournament and getting the job at South Carolina. Meanwhile, Bob Ritchie has tried to got, has, has to try to get his team back to that point and then to the NCAA tournament. Well, let me tell you, it's going to happen for Coach Ritchie. He's got a really fine program, and without question, he's going to have an opportunity to win the championship this year. But you know, it's just funny in this game how one play, one shot, it just really changed your destiny. You're exactly right. I mean, who knows what happens if, if that ball bounces a little differently. Last March, as the free throw off the foul by Joe Anderson, his first, by the way. I like the way Furman is playing today. I mean, they're running their stuff. They're being really sharp. They're executing. He rolls to the rim. Missed the shot. Tipped around. Slauson has control. Slauson's being a lot more active today. Open three from the wing. That's good. Marcus Foster hits the three-pointer, and we're tied at 18. When you get shots within your rhythm and what you practice, the shooting percentage always goes up because they're comfortable shots. This has to be encouraging for Bob Ritchie because most of these 18 points have not been scored by Bothwell and Slauson. The three from Hankins. Sanford off the mark. Anderson 
The flip to Slauson. Gets underneath the defense. The feed to Heen, who is rejected at the rim. Josh Gray there providing the resistance. Josh Gray gives South Carolina a big, strong presence in that post area. That's why he's in the game. Carter Witt, deep three, no good. Slap back outside to Foster. Foster. Now Slauson. Shot clock approaching 10 seconds. Anderson, the feed to Slauson, his layup is good. Great slip screen right there. That's the same action that they faced when they um, played earlier this in, in the tournament South Carolina did. They didn't do a very good job defending it then. They're not doing a very good job defending it now. First lead of the game, by the way, for the Paladins. They see the slip screen right there. Easy layup. They're really taking advantage of that. It, they're getting South Carolina whether or not to switch, whether or not to go over, under, and the screener is just rolling hard to the basket. 9-2 run for Furman. Shot clock to five for Johnson. Now Jackson, three to shoot. Johnson with one will fire. No good. Witt with a rebound. Anderson. Ball movement for Furman has been solid. The attack to the rim has been solid in this first half. Slauson outside for Witt. Anderson, he'll try a three. That's good. The spacing again, Furman just looks a lot more comfortable running their offense today than what they had in the first two games. 12 2 1 for the Furman Paladins. Coming up, we'll take a look at a special Furman legend. Frank Selvi will be inducted into the National Collegiate Basketball Hall of Fame tonight. The Furman great, best remembered for being the only Division I player to score 100 points in a game. Two-time Southern Player of the Year while at Furman. He led the NCAA in scoring twice as well. His senior year, he averaged 41 points per game and was also named the UPI National Player of the Year. He was eventually selected as the number one pick in the NBA draft by the Baltimore Bullets as well, a part of a great Hall of Fame class. Tremendous honor. South Carolina is trying to post up Gigi right now and try to take advantage of the height matchup. Bozeman's Verdonk outside with the feet for Brown, short on the three, Anderson rebound. You can tell both of these two teams that watch film because they're trying to take advantage of things that they've seen other teams be successful with both of these two teams. Foster is rejected. Jackson got a piece of that. South Carolina is now all of a sudden is really trying to attack the rim because that was Furman's weak spot the last two games. Brown fouled and we'll take a look at the class of 2022. Collegiate Basketball Hall of Fame and some great names oh, on there. John Beeline, the job he's done in college basketball. Jim Calhoun, that's my guy. I mean, what he did at Connecticut and where he took that program, Richard Hamilton, uh, Jerry Krause, and my best friend, Roy Williams. <laughs> Very that, special people. That induction ceremony coming up tonight in Kansas City is Hayden Brown will go to the line. Some of those guys have so many awards, they don't know where to place them. <laughs> <laughs> Brown, no good on the first. That foul charged to Tyrese Huey. That was his first foul. Bothwell back in. Just a second team foul. Committed by the Paladins. You know, getting a balance in scoring, I think, for South Carolina is important between the inside and the outside. And they have to be able to attack the rim and get some easy baskets. And I think it'll free up their perimeter shooting a lot more. Two misses by Brown. Leads to a kick out here. Pegues. Bothwell. Outside. Heen tries the three. That's good. Garrett Heen flashes the three. And it's 26-18.
Paladins. That's the pace that Furman likes to play at. It's the first time in this tournament they've been seeming comfortable playing at that pace. 15-2 run and an intercepted pass. Out to Anderson. He straight on three. Brown rebound. Well, Jackson takes it instead. And South Carolina will get back to it. How about Furman doing something that they've had a rare chance to do in these last couple days? Let's play with a lead. <laughs> it's been extremely new for them. South Carolina going with more flex action, just trying to get the ball inside and to be a little bit more patient. Into Brown. Overshot him. Furman ball. Turnover number six. Heen with a three, a lead of eight for the Paladins. At Ebert's Amco, we want to earn your trust. Do you want experienced technicians who will be honest with you and won't try to sell you extra services? Do you need someone to keep you safe and on the road? Do you think you can't put a price tag on trust, experience, honesty, and safety? Ebert's just did. Save at Ebert's. December will be here before you know it. Get ready for colder weather with a free and a free system checkup. Schedule your appointment now. Come see us at Ebert's Amco and Taylor's. Ebert's, a name you can trust. At Ebert's Amco, we want to earn your trust. Do you want experienced technicians who will be honest with you and won't try to sell you extra services? Do you need someone to keep you safe and on the road? Do you think you can't put a price tag on trust, experience, honesty, and safety? Ebert's just did. Save at Ebert's. December will be here before you know it. Get ready for colder weather with a free and a free system checkup. Schedule your appointment now. Come see us at Ebert's Amco and Taylor's. Ebert's, a name you can trust. The beautiful Rainbow Row and the colorful Holmes in Charleston, South Carolina. It's the Shriners Children's Charleston Classic, a lead of eight for Furman, 26 to 18. Today we have the women's basketball game of the day. Aaliyah Boston and number one South Carolina take on number two Stanford with Haley Jones and Cameron Brink at Maples Pavilion. Coverage begins at 3 Eastern, New Pacific on ABC and the ESPN app. South Carolina trying to continue what has been a, a very electrifying weekend for South Carolina athletics. Oh, without question. Ray Tanner has to be elated. The hire he made in football has really paid off. Developing Don Staley's program. I mean, and now it's just, he's just done a tremendous job at South Carolina getting the athletic department where it needs to be. Gamecocks down eight here as the Bothwell three rims out. Ben Vanderwall able to track down the loose chain. South Carolina has to do a better job on the glass. We talked about that. Pegues hits the contested jumper over Brown. Biggest lead of the game for the Paladins at 10. See, when you don't make stops, it puts more pressure on you offensively. South Carolina had control of this game. It was being played at a pace where they were comfortable with. They all of a sudden, Furman makes some baskets. Now they're behind. Now they got to play a little faster. No points in over five minutes for the Gamecocks. And a turnover and a layup by Vanderwall leads to a foul and two free throws for the freshman. And that time, the first guy back. Round, wound up running out of the paint area. Uh, I, I believe it was Brown was the first guy back, and instead of staying there to take the charge, there was a guy in the corner. He ran out to the corner and, and gave Vanderwall a clear shot to the basket. Vanderwall on the way with the first. That's in. Perry, I wanted to ask you, this is the 11th meeting today between these two coaches in Lamont Paris and Bob Ritchie. Is there an advantage for Bob Ritchie because he knows the sets? Obviously, you can say that the other way, too, but is there an advantage for Bob Ritchie? I don't know advantage or comfortability. I mean, I know he's very comfortable because he understands the mentality of the guy he's playing against and what they like to do in certain situations. And Lamont, and Lamont knows the same for him. So the, it, it, familiarity does bring some, some comfort level to you. Coach Ritchie has won seven out of the ten meetings, but he's lost the last three to Lamont, Lamont Paris teams. Johnson for three, that's good. 
So Michi Johnson gets his first points of the day, and it comes at a critical time. Now a nine-point lead for Furman. The but answer short on the other side by Pagis. But Johnson's shot came from moving the ball, getting the ball inside. Jackson already in the double figures with 10. That's a big time shot. The thing with, with Gigi is he can go get that anytime. So when does he not and play through his teammates and when does he just go out and score himself? Good defense, the block on the other end by Slauson. What hustle. Open three, that's no good. Loose ball foul coming up off the Carter three-pointer. Will go the other way, I do believe. No, I, I, I think they called a foul against Slauson. Yes, they did. Slauson picks up the foul after the emphatic block. That's his first. They would, he was trying to keep Gigi off the glass, and I think he got a little too aggressive. You can see the explosiveness that Gigi has, and you can see some of the other weapons that he has with him. It's just a matter of the chemistry and putting it all together. Right with the inbounds play. Good shooting so far for South Carolina, but the defense has not been there. Hopping in and scoring is Chico Carter. Five-point lead. Bothwell misses the layup, gets it back. Kept alive. Approaching five minutes left to go, first half. 30 to 25 lead for Furman. Five to shoot. Pegues clears out room. Misses. Jackson with the aggression on the rebound. Seven straight from South Carolina. Can't make it 10 straight off the missed three. And a possession for the Paladins. He trying to blast through Carter and does so. That was a big time. He has really stepped up today. He's given them another score. And when they get that from him, this Furman team is very good offensively. Heen on the season, averaging six points. He's got seven in this first half. Seven to shoot for Wright. Wright at the foul line. Scoop shot and a foul. Heading into break. Seven point lead for Furman. More from Charleston. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. It's the best place to get everything you need for the holidays. Take the road less traveled. Wow, it's bumpy back here. <laughs> Who are you? I'm from Edmonds. People come to us first to buy or sell their cars. Like, say you want an SUV, but don't want to drive it into the Grand Canyon. We'll help you find a model that fits how you actually drive. You've never tent before, have you? Oh, we have no idea what we're doing. Yeah, we're actors. Car shoppers go to Edmonds first. We drive it like it is. You can't really ignore sensitivity nor your gum issues. I would say it's very common for patients to have both. Does it worry me? Absolutely. What excited me about Sensodyne's sensitivity and gum is it really allows you to be able to take care of both issues. There's no question it's something that I would recommend. The Shriners Children's Charleston Classic continues. Old Dominion and Davidson after this one. Then at 3.30, the championship game between Virginia Tech and the College of Charleston reaching the championship game for the first time. Penn State, Colorado State following it up as well. Tremendous slate of games today. Without question. I'm sure Virginia Tech wasn't figuring coming down here and playing a road game. And that's what it's going to be like for the championship game. But it should be a tremendous ball game. Special thanks to Shriners Children's for putting on a fantastic event over the last few days. The hospitality has been A-plus here in Charleston. They've done a tremendous job with this, and the, the charity that they set up for it is one that is really, really special. And coaches and athletes can relate to it. Jacoby Wright with the first free throw. 
That cuts the lead to six. The foul was picked up by Tyrese Huey, his second. And two from right and and this is this is kind of the the issue for south carolina you know they, they've been able to have good offensive patches but defensively they've been inconsistent there you see a back cut right there just was a bad pass they're certainly trying to take advantage of south carolina firming in south carolina defensively by a lot of their back cuts see this is where i think gg can really be effective in, in that Carmelo mid-post area. To the paint, outside. A block, Slauson. Blocked the shot of Zachary Davis. Slauson down the floor, gets fouled on the way up. And he'll go to the line. Tuesday, we'll have the exclusive reveal of the next college football playoff top 25 rankings. Reese and the guys will break them down from top to bottom, have coaches' reactions, as well as a live interview with committee chairman Boo Corrigan, the North Carolina State Athletic Director, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 Pacific on the ESPN app, and watch ESPN. A few high-wire acts yesterday involving the, the top four. Michigan and TCU we had a chance to check out some of those games yesterday. I mean, it was... A tight finish. We know number five on that list, Tennessee. They lost to South Carolina, but we'll find out more info here in the next coming days as how things should shake out. That South Carolina-Tennessee game was amazing. Michigan awaiting Ohio State coming up, so lots to be decided. Moving forward, five to shoot for Jackson. An air ball. That will give the basketball back to Furman. See, South Carolina that time ran really good initial action. They got a back cut. They popped GG. He had his hands for a slot drive. But then after that, once the ball got in his hands, everybody stood. And now it forces him to try to make a one-on-one -on -one play. The action has to continue. Jackson and Carter, by the way, for South Carolina combined for 20 points. 8 of 12 shooting from the field. But they got to get some help. Five to shoot for Slauson. Now Bothwell with three. With one. Slauson lets it go for three. Missed it. And the rebound grabbed by Davis. Carter, the feed to Jackson. Rolling and laying it up and in. I, I keep telling you, simple. Get the ball in the paint. Good things happen. Carter pushed the ball that time. Found Gigi has a trail. We got a layup. Down to a four-point lead. He. Now Bothwell gets to the rim. The layup is good, but that'll be waved off. This is transition. You see Carter drives it to the baseline, gives it to GG on the trail. He's able to finish. Foul picked up by Zachary Davis. That's his first. Looked like GG put an elbow right in the midsection. He is in a little discomfort, and he'll head out here, I do believe. Nope, he'll stay in. It'll when be you, Davis who'll head out. When you're that good, the coach has a tendency <laughs> to let you play through it. Bothwell. Slauson wide open for three. Couldn't get it to go. And a rebound controlled by Wright. South Carolina, South Carolina playing with three guards right now. The layup is in from Michi Johnson, but it's waved off. A foul first instead against Joe Anderson. So number two on Anderson. And team foul number five for the Paladins. 131 remaining. South Carolina making a push to draw closer before halftime. Long three from the right of the circle that bounces a little bit too high off the English there. And it'll go back over to Furman. So that three by Michi Johnson, maybe not ideal. No, and especially when you had Gigi in the post. Anytime you can see a post guy's numbers throwing the ball. 
because that means the defense is playing behind him and he's open, especially someone as talented as Gigi. Slauson slams it home. Slauson cut right down the middle of the lane. It, South Carolina got confused on that action, which they had this whole weekend, on whether or not to switch it or to stay with your man, and they wound up giving up a layup. Johnson. Now Jackson. Under a minute left to go. Turn around, Jay. Too strong. Slauson rebound. Off the right miss. A new possession, and a three is in. Marcus Foster from deep. The lead is back to nine. Foster's come out today and really stepped up. He seems a lot more comfortable than he has the past two ball games. Foster with eight points today. 15 seconds left. Shot clock turned off. Watch for a ball screen by GG. Pick and pop. Johnson down low. Nicely done. Chico Carter with an easy layup. Good back cut. The heave by Slauson, short of the rim. And that takes us into the half. Our score, Furman 38, South Carolina 31. Coming up, Kevin Connors and Seth Greenberg will be talking ACC hoops in the studio for our halftime report. More from Charleston in a bit. Kentucky, King and Calhoun Street, more from Charleston in a bit. You're watching Feast Week presented by Lowe's in the 2022 Shriners Children's Charleston Classic. Get a look at the custom house in Charleston, South Carolina, and certainly as this first half has worn on into halftime, Furman has been able to establish control. Hello, everybody. Derek Jones and Perry Clark with you at the half, 38 to 31. And Perry Furman doing something we haven't seen them do much of in the first couple of days here, and that's lead. Without question, but they've got a lot of balanced scoring and some people have really stepped up to really help them with that, especially offensively, moving the basketball and getting the types of shots that they like. Well, it's interesting when you take a look at Furman, one of the things that they've really been able to do here is establish themselves without necessarily the help of Bothwell and Slauson. Without question, that's Foster right there knocking down a jump shot. And then watch this action right there as Slauson is able to get to the basket for an easy dunk. Meanwhile, for South Carolina, it's basically been Gigi Jackson and also Chico Carter. Yeah, they've gotten uh, Gigi with his jump shots. Uh, Chico Carter has done a great job attacking the basket. I think they have to continue to get a better mix of inside, outside. They've got to score more points in the paint than what they have right now. Those two combined for 24 of the 31 points for South Carolina in the first half. Let's take a look at our first half stats brought to you by Dollar General. Points in the paint for Furman. I, see, that, that, that can't happen. I mean, South Carolina really needs to be more dominant in the paint. They're bigger, they're stronger. That's what Furman's Achilles heel in the past two games. South Carolina has to do a better job taking advantage of that. And the, the balance has been an issue for South Carolina. The defense has been an issue. 15-0 run for Furman, and that's really how they've been able to really fortify this lead here of seven. Well, what Furman wound up doing is running a lot of ball screens and have the post guy slip the ball screen and roll. South Carolina has not handled that action very well. They didn't handle it very well against Colorado State. So Furman obviously picked up some things over the uh, film. But they, Furman wants to, to continue to do that. Balance scoring has really helped. And you know Mr. Bothwell is going to step up in the second half. He's done it the last few games. Good energy here in the first half, despite the early start time. 10:30 start time today what was the earliest game you remember coaching it. <laughs> it was a 10:30 start. We were in the regionals out in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and we played bad. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that wake-up call, when those uh, games start, it's it's an earlier wake-up call during the day for sure. As this second half, seventh place game in the Shriners Children's Charleston Classic back underway. Huey, now Pagese. Ten to shoot. Slauson moves. Bothwell. 
Gets underneath the defense. The floater and a foul. This will be, I believe, a blocking foul coming up. Yeah, but I don't think the, the I'm not sure the. Check that offensive foul, offensive excuse me. Foul, yeah. Bothwell, you see, that time he really penetrated. He's got to pull up and take the short jump shot. Good defense that time by South Carolina. So the charge effectively taken there by Hayden Brown, who has the ball here. And we'll go the other way. Offensive foul here. That was set up. It was a double screen for Gigi coming to the elbow. And Brown took it on the isolation and just ran over Slauson. Number two on Brown. How about the mindset of, of the defenders this year? We kind of hit on it a little bit on Friday. The new emphasis in terms of flopping and the fact that there's no longer going to be a warning for flopping. It's just going straight to the technical foul. Yeah, you know, I always thought as a coach, flopping was overrated. I thought that there were a couple guys that mastered the art and it got a lot of attention. But for the most part, it's hard enough to get guys to take charges, more or less faking them. <laughs> Bothwell with it here. That's a, that's a very good point. <laughs> here we Into the corner for Bothwell. He'll launch and hit. You knew he was going to be ready to play the second half, you know. Furman, Furman got a free pass with a lot of the other guys in the first half, but you know coming out of halftime, Bothwell's going to really step up. Just five points for Bothwell after that three. And speaking of threes, Hayden Brown hits from deep. That's what they really count on Hayden Brown to do, come in and give him some experience, be a guy that can play inside and outside. Bothwell fighting hard down low and one for Mike Bothwell. Five in a row. He's so tough and he's so competitive. He showed us over the, over the last two days that he is a big time player. And when the stuff's on the game's on the line, he wants the basketball and he can come up with key plays. I've been very impressed with him. So for Bothwell, averaging 22 and a half coming in, team's leading scorer. Very good showing here through the first two days. And day three, a quiet start, but now coming alive here to help give Furman a now 10-point lead. But that's what leaders do. They know they can't win it by themselves, so they try to get other people involved and give other people confidence going and other people uh, a chance to really step up and play. And then they know when their time is, they're ready to go. Off from Michi Johnson, Gigi Jackson in, and his shot goes. You know, he's so clever around the basket. He uses his shoulders and his legs to create space and traffic. He's got 14, and bad pass there, out of bounds, back to South Carolina. Coming up later, we will see in the championship game, Virginia Tech in the College of Charleston. That should be an electric atmosphere for the title for the Shriners Children Charleston Classic. This place will be rocking for that game. The, in essence, the home team. <laughs> and that pass airmailed to the bench area of South Carolina. You know, you know that time Gigi got the ball in, in the short corner and everybody kind of stood. And, you know, when he gets the ball there, all eyes of the defense on cut. Give him some cutters. Give him some options. Ninth turnover of the day for South Carolina. Slauson straight on three hits. When they get Slauson going, this Furman team is going to be a tough out because they've got all the pieces. He's not had a great tournament. And a steal by Huey. Throws it down. Tyrese Huey feeling it. Largest lead of the game for the Paladins at 13. You know, the guard play for South Carolina, they need their guards to get them into things a little easier than what they're doing. They're going to face some really great guards in the SEC, and their ability to create and get the ball where it needs to be is going to be really important for the success of the South Carolina team. Jackson. In the Bozeman's for Don. The layup from Carter is blocked, taken away by Furman. Pegues. Foster outside. Huey will try it. 
Missed it all, but it'll go right back to Furman. That ball went off of Johnson's leg. There you see a steal right there. Great finish. A getting good offense from your defense is what you're really looking to try to do. A couple of substitutions from Coach Ritchie. Anderson in, Heen in as well. And Huey and Foster, who have given them some good minutes, go to the bench. Real good minutes. Pegues catches. Bothwell on the attack. Can't score a brown board. We'll get a whistle blocking foul coming up. Carter has shown he can knock down jump shot. If he can put that attacking the basket with his game, it's going to make him much more difficult to guard because people are going to try to just play him for the three-point shot. Pegues picked up the foul and lost his shoe in the process. Tying that back up. Another substitution as Carter Witt is back in. The winner of this game will pick up their first win of the tournament. The loser will take the 0-4. It's not a good place to be. Right to the rim. It's been a good field overall. Colorado State's had a pretty good showing as well. And, of course, Virginia Tech and the College of Charleston. Davidson, who we'll see later on. This has been an excellent field. And I think it's all the teams are trying to find themselves. They want to play against really good competition to see what they can and can't do and then make the adjustments from there. Down low, G.G. Jackson dumps in two more to cut the deficit to nine. Furman has just gone small, and I mean, G.G. should touch the ball just about every possession in the post area. They're playing, Furman's playing with one post guy. Averaging 16 in the tournament, has 16 right now, and that's an offensive foul against Garrett Heen. Furman up by nine. More from Charleston in a moment. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. It's the best place to get everything you need for the holidays. The NFL returns to Mexico with our Week 11 Monday Night Football matchup at Estadio Azteca in Mexico City. Christian McCaffrey and the 49ers take on Kyler Murray and the Cardinals in an important NFC West game. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6. Fourth NFL game in Mexico and the first since 2019. Important one for the 49ers as they try to make a surge in the NFC West and the NFC field as well. Could be a dangerous team come January. Furman's gone back with two bigs now. Johnson misses the three and will go the other way. Brown just cleared out half the Furman front line <laughs> trying to get a rebound. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know the South Carolina coaches really like his aggressiveness and tough play, but he wiped out half of Furman's front line. That's his third foul. He played nearby at the Citadel before transferring to South Carolina. That ball goes out of bounds. It'll stay with Furman. Perry, you were a former assistant coach with South Carolina. What do you see happening right now with the program, and how do they kind of right the ship here? They've won two straight games coming into this. Well, it's a growing process, and I think integrating the inside game with the perimeter game is very, very important against great competition, which is what they faced here. They faced schools that have some veteran players, have a style of play, and are very in-depth at doing their style of play. Bothwell, tough shot. Garrett Heen, offensive rebound, the battle, and the foul. This Furman team has come to play today. I mean, they've got a lot of pride, and you can see that and what it is that they're trying to do. You see Bothwell driving. Looked like he got bumped there, but getting an offensive rebound. The South Carolina team, they have to do a better job of rebounding the basketball. I mean, when you get in the SEC, you're playing some monsters. And that ball, you got to play above the rim because they've got some guys that just eat the glass up. 
And so that's one area that they're really going to have to get better with as you see a sub now coming in just because they know that they really have to do a better job of, of getting bigger. Josh Gray into the game for Hayden Brown, as mentioned, with the three fouls. One out of two for Heen. It is a 50-40 to 40 game. The Paladins leading. The difference today for Furman, we, we've seen the second half Paladins in the first half today. Hence the lead of 10. Hank and Sanford moves it over to Carter. Eight to shoot. Down to five. Carter lays it in. Carter with that quick step gets to the rack. He's really good getting scoring the basketball. And if he can get to the basket like that, that'll make his jump shot even more available. He has that ball knocked away from him, kept alive by Witt. Carter's down. He takes advantage and hits a three as Carter lying face down on the floor in some pain. Looks like he got the wind knocked out of him when he went after the loose ball. A lot of times going after loose balls, you catch your knee. You don't want to catch it in the head area because that leads to some other concussion type of protocols. But a lot of times you can get it in the back or the shoulder. I'm not real sure where he wound up getting the contact. Uh, it may have been in the back of the head with the knee, and they'll take a look. I tell you what, they have one of the finest trainers in Mark Rogers. He does an unbelievable job of keeping guys healthy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah Heen caught him inadvertently in the back of the head. You always get concerned with that. But it looks like he's holding the, his back. He had a, a warm-up brace on his back in pregame. So I don't believe that collision helped. No. But I can tell you what, South Carolina has one of the finest medical staffs in the country. So they'll get him back awful quick. Jackson, raise and release from three, missed it. And we've got a whistle here. Uh-oh, and a technical foul. Josh Gray, when he comes in the game, he presents a low, a low post presence and a physicality. That's what he's in the game for. And uh, I don't know exactly what happened. But I know when he gets in the game, they want to clean up rebounding. They want to get the ball into the paint area. They want an aggressiveness inside. Lamont Paris took exception to something that was happening on the floor. And then players from both sides started to get into it. And that will lead to a technical foul. We'll have to get the explanation yeah. here. In and a moment. Lam Lamont Parrish is one of the most even keel coaches that I've ever met. I mean, he is really positive with everything that he does and the way he handles his team. There you see, oh, the Slauson wound up, it looked like he was pushing a little bit, and it looked like Josh Gray took exception to that, and those two wound up mouthing at each other, and there's what the technical. So it looks and like I think Lamont was upset because the first action was Slauson looked like he was the aggressor to initiate it, and they always catch the second guy. So it's a double technical foul. Class A. One on Gray, one on Slauson. And you could see a moment ago in that huddle, Coach Paris kind of getting on Gray a little bit there for getting back into it after the shove took place. It's kind of hard when you get shoved yeah, all the way to yeah. the, into the bleachers to not do or say anything. And so, but you have to be very careful with that and everything. And I think we have a fine officiating crew. And uh, I think they really want to do a good job of cleaning that up. But a coach like Lamont Paris, who normally does not complain, 
So once a coach that normally doesn't complain starts to complain, officials listen more because they feel like maybe they missed something or something going on that they're really not aware of. So Slauson now has three fouls after that flurry because there's a regular foul and there's a technical foul on top of that. And we'll get the explanation here. Okay, shooting the two for the excessive. Yes. Okay. Yeah, for the excessive one. Okay. We just got clarification. It was a double technical, but Slauson got hit with with um, an, a, a flagrant. Yes. Uh, push in the back, and that's why Gray's shooting two foul shots. So Gray at the line, no good on the first. So South Carolina will maintain possession after this. Slauson was too aggressive trying to get to the glass, and, it, and he actually, I mean, he literally did push Gray out of bounds. Yeah, unnecessary play, for yeah. sure. And Slauson will head out, and that, that kind of thing has to be frustrating to Coach Ritchie because those types of things sometimes can get the team that's down back into the game. Oh, without question, it can change the momentum in the game. Especially the coaches, when things are going well, you really don't want to change a whole lot. Gray battling and scoring down low. So Gray able to get three points out of that sequence with the back end of the tech and the bucket. But, but that's why Gray's in the game, to give South Carolina some low, low post presence. Allow Gigi to float a little bit more, to rebound the basketball. If he can score like that, it'll really help South Carolina. Witt tried to go over Jackson, missed the shot. Johnson. Checked here by Huey. Tries to get by him. Tried to swing it outside. Foster got a hand up and stole it. It, 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 look, it looks like Johnson's Johnson behind the really, play. Yeah, lost his shoe or got hurt again. He really hurt his ankle earlier this season. And it looks like he reheard it. Huey hits the Huey hits the three, but Johnson is down on the other side of the floor. We'll check back in in a moment. 11 point lead for Furman.
11 point lead for Furman back in Charleston, South Carolina. Feast Week presented by Lowe's as we get a look at what happened to Michi Johnson heading into that last break. It looked like he went up and then just came down and the leg or the ankle just kind of gave way on him and he was just down and there you see Mark Rogers who does a great job as the trainer there at South Carolina um, working on him and they, they keep going to the leg so I don't know if he cramped up or exactly what happened well he's battled injury this season and having him on the floor certainly is a big plus for the team but he is going to be on the bench here we'll see how long he'll be there with Furman up by 11 56 45 so Huey with the three-pointer that ushered us in the break he's got 12 points to lead Furman Jackson going to work at the baseline seven to shoot looking for help Hank and Sanford. Tough shot. Can't get it with the right hand. Bothwell tried to squeeze and save that pass. Could not do it. Yeah, but that time Slauson gave him a lead to the sideline. You never give a guard a lead to the sideline. You give him a lead up the court so they can catch it in, in motion and keep going and attacking the basket. One of the things for South Carolina, I think their guards are being extended a little too far. Their passing lanes are a little long to get the ball into the post area. See how far out they are? You, you've got to operate around the top of the key. Jackson, turnaround shot, no good. And the rebound control, Pegues. Huey steps into a three. That one, a little bit off. Right, circling the paint, and he cannot score, but he was fouled as he got to the rim. Give, give that offensive opportunity credit to Gray because he really did a, a tremendous job of sealing off so nobody could come over on the help side to, to stop the penetration. And Jacoby was able to get all the way to the rim. Number two on right. Second one, Pegui says we get a look at the lineup later on today. Old Dominion versus Davidson. That one follows next. Should be a fun game between those two. And then, of course, a championship game. Virginia Tech, College of Charleston at 3.30 on ESPN2. Penn State and Colorado State. That's a pretty good one as well to close out the day. That's going to be a really good game. Penn State losing a tight one to Virginia Tech 61-59 on Friday in the semifinal. Slauson against Gray. Slauson falls to the floor and he walks. Slauson is not going to be able to back Gray down. Gray's just too strong. He's got to stay face up, try to drive him right, left. Josh Gray is 255 pounds. You're not going to move him, as you said. That's going to be a, a tough, tough outing for Slauson. See, South Carolina is operating too far away from the basket. Jackson. Now Brown will try it from deep. A little bit off. Bothwell able to get the rebound against Gray. Ten point advantage for the Paladins. Sloss in, lays it up and in. All that was caused by Bothwell's penetration. If they can get Sloss and Bothwell to really start playing like that together, this Furman team is going to be awful tough once they get in the conference play. Slauson, such a versatile player, leads the team in rebounds, assists, blocks, and steals heading into this contest. See, Gray has an advantage in the post, but the, it's taking them too long to get the ball into the paint area. Scoop layup by Jackson rims out. Brown tried to get it back, could not. There you see Bothwell. Great drive, sucks up the defense, finds the cutter. When this Furman team shares the basketball, they are the most effective offensively. Under 10 minutes left to go. And, and that's one of the things we talked about coming into this tournament. You know, we talked so much about three-point shooting and the number of attempts. 
Furman was attempting 22 threes per game, but they had not shot it well in the first couple as Pegues will go to the line here out of the foul. The movement just seems to be better today. It is, and they're being much more aggressive in what they're doing and sharp. And because it's, the movement is better, they're getting the shots that they practice. And so, therefore, the shooting percentage is higher than what it's been. Pegues at the line after the second foul picked up by Jacoby Wright. South Carolina really needs Jacoby to step up and to play well in that point guard spot. He had a lot of experience last year, had some really bright moments, and they need him to continue to grow and mature. The scoring is a little bit more balanced in the second half for South Carolina, but it's it's been very up and down offensively for them. But it's not about the balance. It's about who you're playing through, and I just think you have to play through Gigi because he's the guy that will suck up the double teams. He's the guy that can knock down the jump shot. He's the guy that can post up. That's who you have to play through. Carter's wing jumper misses. Jackson right there with the follow. G.G. Jackson, the outstanding freshman now with 18. 8 of 13 shooting from the field. 12-point game. Bothwell fires. Long miss. Lawson rebound. Nine minutes left to go. He. Five to shoot for Slauson. Over to Heen, and that pass is out of bounds off of Heen. Watch Gigi right there uh, going and getting the basket off the glass. He's got the ability to score in a lot of different ways. But when he's posting up and you can see his numbers, I think you got to give him the ball. 18 and five so far today, closing in on another 20 point performance. Bad pass by Brown to Bothwell. Pegues trying to post up open and Slauson stepped out of bounds. I don't know why guys do that. That used to drive a lot, me crazy. Man. I mean, know where the out of bounds line is. I mean, in our games, we've seen that like <laughs> four or five times. It's I mean, it's court awareness. I guess guys are just I'm going to step back as far as I have to to be open. Right. Rainmaker three misses. Brown, offensive rebound, scoop right hand is in. That, that's one thing Brown does, does real well for them is attack the glass. He goes up and puts it in. He feeling it, going back down the floor. Well, that's a big time play by he. He was looking for the three point play. 62-50. And we'll get a foul against Furman. 12-point lead. Charleston, South Carolina, the Paladins leading. Some days it feels like you could run forever. you're way way out there I was late and you need a ride home let's dive in what about your back it's fine Advil dual action fights pain two ways Advil targets pain at the source acetaminophen blocks pain signals Advil dual action Feast week continues, and it's a busy day today. We outlined what's going on here in Charleston. Frank Martin has UMass in the Myrtle Beach Invitational Championship game. Well, forever be grateful to Frank Martin. I've done a, had a lot of honors in my life, but being able to go to a Final Four was always a dream. Won an HDC championship, coach of the year and everything, but nothing beats going to a Final Four. And what he did at South Carolina to take that group there was remarkable. What a week it's been for Arizona State. 
upset earlier in the week, and then they come back, bounce back to beat number 20 Michigan. Great win, and you know, but that's what these tournaments are all about. You know, finding, growing your team, finding out what it takes to win, putting the pieces together, and that's what makes Feast Week so great is the competition. Bobby Hurley channeling some of that old Duke mojo to get <laughs> Jawan Howard in Michigan again. As Arizona State with the easy win over Michigan earlier this week. Great move here by South Carolina. They changed the tempo. They're going 1-3-1 one, one right now to kind of take Furman out a lot of things they want to do. Look for Mr. Brothwell to try to step up and take advantage. Turnover, Brown. Oh, and Brown tried to get it there to Chico Carter and fired it away. You, you got the big guys have to give the ball up and let guards make plays. I think they've seen so many of the big guys dribble the ball up because they do some in the NBA, but those are pros. I mean, in college, rebound it, give it to the guards, let them create. 12-point lead. And another turnover. Right this time in the lane. Right, lost the ball. Twice South Carolina has gotten what they wanted. They got stopped with the opportunity to cut the lead, and they've given it away. And there you go, Pegues hammers a three home from the corner. 20 to two edge and points off of turnovers. 15 point lead for Furman. But they got what they want from the defense. Great call by Lamont Paris. Changing the tempo, getting the steal, putting yourself in position to cut this lead. It's the largest lead of the game for Furman at 15. Shot clock to six. Carter with a three to answer. So Chico Carter hits a three-pointer. Carter coming in averaging 13 points per game. And coach, you know, those last couple sequences in a game like this where you need some stops, you need some buckets in transition, those could be pivotal possessions. Oh, without question, you know, we call it game organization. You've got to be organized in transition. Oh, Slauson, they had the lob play there, and Slauson couldn't haul it in. Some turnovers on the last few possessions for Furman. Jackson will try it. Misses it from the wing. Rebound for the Paladins. Twelve point edge. Five and a half left to go from Charleston. Seventh place game in the Shriners Children's Charleston Classic as Garrett Heen with a sledgehammer. You gotta make the second rotation. They stopped the initial drive by Bothwell. Uh, handled the pass to Slauson, but didn't get the follow up. Oh, Jackson. Oh boy, that Jackson turnover. We'll get to it in a second. Watch out, Furman moves the basketball right there. Great basketball, Pugliese. Right there, you see Slauson got it, dropped it off the hand, and this Furman team is playing really well right now. On that last pass by Jackson, he saw Daniel Hankins Sanford going to the scorer's table, but he thought he was on the floor and threw the pass that way, and it went right to the South Carolina bench. Ooh, it's been that kind of day for the Gamecocks. Bothwell. Slauson. We'll tap that one outside to Bothwell. The lob for Heen, way too tall, and that goes back over to South Carolina. It looks like they're having some issues with that defense. They really are. If South Carolina can settle down and score some baskets, they can put themselves right back in this game. Still some time left, and Heen fouls. Bozeman's for Donk. And it'll be a one and one situation here. That'll be number three on Heen. Bozeman for Donk has done a good job at the top of the one three one. His size and length has made it difficult to go guard to guard pass and to get the ball into the high post, which is the two places you like to do to attack against the one three one. So look for South Carolina to stay in it. They just have to settle down offensively. Uh, they're probably looking to after the four minute mark to get Gigi back in the game because they need him to finish. Heen will go out 11 points. And again, if you joined us late, 
Coach Ritchie made a change to the lineup. He went with Ben Vanderwall to get the start. So he came in off the bench. And he's really had some energy off the bench today. He really has. It, Michi Johnson is back in the game now for South Carolina. They need him here down 12. 435 left. Slauson. Pegues goes back over to Slauson. Into the corner. Bothwell. Three is in. What Furman did that time is they ran Bothwell to the corner and let him work the corner against the 1-3-1 one, one instead of the wing area. Bothwell with 11. Carter. Bozeman's Verdonk fouled. Two free throws coming. Bozeman Verdonk has really stepped up. He's done a really good job defensively in what they asked him to do. What a story for Bozeman's Verdonk. We'll get to it in a moment here, but he's got a chance to cut into this deficit. Tonight, we have the men's basketball game of the day. It's the first ever meeting between number four, Kentucky, and number two, Gonzaga. Last season's National Player of the Year, Oscar Shibwe, will be back in the mix for this one to lead the Wildcats against Drew Timmy. And the Bulldogs in Spokane. Coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ESPN and the app. Bozeman's Verdonk graduated in three years from Illinois, and he's working on his law degree. Not bad. Not bad at all. And 13 point lead for Furman. Just over four left to go. Furman up 13. Shriners Children's Charleston Classic Day. Three turnovers have been a big story in this game, Perry. And then from that, what Furman has been able to do with those South Carolina turnovers. Yeah, South Carolina with 16 turnovers. That's, that's too many. But then she from a 20 point off a of turnover as opposed to four for South Carolina. That is the difference right now in the ball game. Uh, and then you see the scoring. I mean, Furman has seven uh, guys, uh, six guys with seven points or more. And South Carolina has basically been a two man show with Jackson and Carter leading the way. Derek Jones and Perry Clark with you in Charleston, South Carolina. Final day of action here. Pressure right now with South Carolina. As he, with 15 points, back out on the floor. 13 point lead for the Paladins. Slauson, turnaround shot, beautifully done by Jalen Slauson. He worked for that one now. I mean, he put it down, he went right, he went left. He wound up kissing it off the glass. Great move by Slauson. It's important now for South Carolina to get quality shots. Slauson, a South Carolina kid. Family ties in, in this area in terms of basketball. His cousin RJ played at South Carolina. Wing, Brown three, air ball. See, I think Misi Johnson has to set up and be ready to shoot that on after he comes off the double team from uh, Jackson. He's too good a shooter to be passing up that shot. Now, I don't know if his ankle or leg is bothering him, but he's got to take that shot. Slauson will fire from deep. Missed it this time. And a rebound grabbed yet again. As this Furman team really capitalizing on the errors by South Carolina. Foster from deep, too strong. Slauson tried to tip that one back. Instead, it's down to Jackson. Jackson, pull up foul line J. Too strong off the back of the rim. And Pegues will slow things down. South Carolina has to go man to man right now. Furman is moving the ball around way too well to be able to stay in that 1-3-1 one, one and be effective. Nice feed from Slauson to Pegues with the finish. Seventeen point lead, seventy four to fifty seven. Carter, ooh. Carter on the floor, a little nicked up. 
74-57, Furman lead, more in a moment. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. And Dollar General. Save time, save money every day. You can't really ignore sensitivity nor your gum issues. I would say it's very common for patients to have both. Does it worry me? Absolutely. What excited me about Sensodyne's sensitivity and gum is it really allows you to be able to take care of both issues. There's no question it's something that I would recommend. This Thanksgiving, same incredible feast for the same incredible low price as last year. From those tasty side dishes to the most delicious main courses, you can get it all without spending too much. Get an entire holiday meal that costs the same. Think of it as this year's spread at last year's price. It's our way of helping you celebrate a very happy Thanksgiving. Chico Carter going into the timeout, suffered an injury, and we'll get a look at it here, and you'll see what happens to his left foot. Yeah, he, he twisted it right there. And that's the last thing South Carolina needs to see is another ankle. Michi Johnson is already struggling from one, and now Chico Carter. But again, you know, a tremendous medical staff. Continuing to look that over. That, that's their ortho guy, Dr. Mazaway in the red. And those, those ankle injuries, they're so tough, especially for players like Carter, who quick cuts, moves back and forth. Quickness really a part of his game. And they really spend a lot of time on taping them up, building up the ankles so that those sort of things just don't happen with the frequency that will keep you from being able to play. Firm is being really patient right now. Heen for three. Got it. Well, he's having a game. You see, I mean, he just gave me a big <laughs> smile, man. He, he did. He did. The TV time. <laughs> Garrett Heen wants him, he wants to be talked about on these airwaves as Jackson is fouled the other way. That ties his career high of 18, which he set last year at Louisville in an upset win for Furman. See, he likes those big time games now. <laughs> Jackson at the stripe. You know what a talent he is. And he's a better, he's a better young man. I mean, it's great family, really loves the Columbia area. Uh, he's done a lot for the school. Just a tremendous young man. He's going to have a great career. Three more games left today. Old Dominion and Davidson will follow next on ESPN News. And then the championship game of the Shriners Children's Charleston Classic. Virginia Tech, College of Charleston, followed by Penn State and Colorado State in the third place game. Some fine basketball left. Here today from TD Arena. So Jackson now with 19 points to lead South Carolina. He looking for the career high. Could not get it. Very frustrated at that as Jackson whips a pass inside. Ford Cooper into the game for the first time. The three by Hankins Sanford, no good. Under a minute left to go. And Furman appears to be on their way towards a win. They won their first two games of the season, lost their first two here in Charleston, but will grab a W here in the next 41 seconds. And they've done it with balanced scoring, with really good defense, and great rebounding. Bothwell down to Heen, who drops it in. <laughs> he, <laughs> he flashes the 20. Making his way back down the floor. He wanted that one. New career high for Garrett Heen. Right. Fadeaway jumper is in. Yeah, again, this South Carolina team coming together. Uh, this, this, they have to take this tournament as a learning and do better with some certain things defensively that they have to pick up and certainly rebounding the basketball better than what they've done here this weekend. A sensational finish 
for Furman. They defeat South Carolina 79 to 60 to grab seventh place. A time to take a look at our player of the game brought to you by Shriners Children's. A complete performance from Jalen Slauson today. Complete. Great job with the point, the rebound, but just his leadership and the way he fought against the South Carolina big guys on the glass for Furman. Garrett Heen also chipping in with a career performance as we get a look at Furman and the rest of the Shriners Children's Field. Virginia Tech and Charleston will play in the championship game at 3.30. Old Dominion and Davidson will lock up next. And South Carolina will look for answers in the days to come the rest of the way. Our final score is Furman 79, South Carolina 60. Our next game from Charleston starts here on ESPN News in about 25 minutes. ODU takes on the Davidson Wildcats. Now stay tuned for Vandy Rolls. Have a good one, everybody.